title of the first section is Simplify Radicals. In this section, we'll simplify radicals by using factor trees. The first question is radical or square root of 72. Taking the square root of 72, there is no single number times itself at 72. So if you remember from previous sections, we can factor by using a factor tree to find the square root or radical of 72. Two numbers that multiply to get 72. We could use 9 and 8. And again, factoring down the rest of the factor tree, 9 would be 3 times 3, and 8 would be 4 times 2. And we can continue to factor where possible the 4 we can factor to get 2 times 2. Finding the pairs, since it's a square root, we're looking for pairs of numbers. We have a pair of 3's and also a pair of 2's. So square root of 72, anytime you circle a pair, that number goes outside the square root or radical. If you have two pairs, we can multiply those together, 3 times 2. And inside the square root or radical is in the single numbers. We don't count the ones that we factored, only the numbers at the end of the factor tree, which in this case would be a 2. So our final answer, multiplying the outside numbers, would be 6 and radical 2. So our final answer, radical 72, can be simplified to 6 times radical 2. Second question, the cube root of 54 x to the fourth power. And again, simplifying this, we can do the number first and then the variable. The third root of 54, there is no single number times itself. Three times it's 54. So again, we can do the factor tree on 54. Using any two numbers that multiply to 54, two numbers that we could use is 9 times 6, and factor the 9 to 3 times 3, and we can factor the 6 to 3 times 2. The third root, or cube root, of 54, instead of the pairs, if we have a 3, we're looking for sets of 3. So a set of 3 would be the 3 threes. Any sets, again, go outside the radical. And inside the radical would be the single number that we did not factor and did not circle, which would be a 2. For the final answer, we have to include the variable x to the fourth. If you remember x to the fourth, we can write out as 4x's. And again, the third root or cube root, we want sets of 3. There's a single set of 3. So for our final answer, we have a 3 outside the radical a single set of x's, which would be 3x. Inside the radical, we can put the cube root back on. We have a 2 on the inside, and a single x left on the inside also. So our final answer, the cube root of 54x to the fourth, we can simplify to 3x times the cube root of 2x. And last question for the section, the cube root of 2 over 3x. Looking at this question, we have a fraction inside of a cube root. If we do factor trees on a 2 or a 3, we cannot factor those or there won't be any sets of 3. But what we can do, similar to square roots, we can simplify the radical to the numerator, which would be the cube root of 2 and also the denominator, which would be the cube root of 3x. Simplifying from here, just like square roots, we cannot have radicals in the denominator of a fraction, so we have to multiply to cancel out this radical or the cube root. Since it's a cube root, that means we want three sets. When we multiply, we can multiply by the same radical, the cube root of 3x. But since it's a cube root, instead of two pairs of three, we want three pairs, which means we can multiply twice by a second cube root of 3x. By multiplying by two sets of 3x, we'll have three sets of 3x, which we can simplify. 
Keep in mind, like fractions, whenever we multiply for the denominator, we have to multiply on the numerator. So we'll multiply the top by the cube root of 3x times the cube root of 3x. Simplifying from here, since these are all the third root or cube root, the third root would stay the same. And we can multiply the inside numbers, which would be 2 times 3 times 3. 2 times 3 would be 6, times 3 more would be 18, and also multiplying x times x would be x squared. For the denominator, we'll have 3 times 3 times 3, and x times x times x, but that's also 3 sets of 3 and 3 sets of x's. Since we're looking for the third root, we can take all three of those, put them outside the cube root or outside the radical, and there won't be anything left on the inside of the radical. We can check and see if 18 factors. Factoring 18, we'll have 9 times 2, and 9 is 3 times 3. The third root, though, there is no sets of 3, so we cannot simplify the 18. x squared is only 2x's, so we do not have 3x's to simplify. So our final answer would be the third root of 18x squared all over 3x. The title of the last section today is Operations with Radicals. In this section we'll look at basic operations, addition, subtraction, and multiplication with radicals or square roots. First question is 5 radical 2 minus 2 radical 2. When subtracting radicals, similar to variables, you have to have like terms, the same radical, the same root number, in this case square roots. So 5 radical 2 minus 2 radical 2. Subtracting the coefficients would be 3 radical 2. Second question, radical 12 plus Radical 48 minus radical 27. Similar to the previous question, we can add and subtract radicals, but the number inside the radical has to be the same to do so. When we have different numbers inside the radical, what we can do is factor each one and combine the ones that have these same radicals. Factoring the 12, we could use the numbers 4 times 3, and 4, we can do 2 times 2. So we'll have a pair of 2's, which means radical 12 will be the same as 2 radical 3. Simplifying the 48, we can do 12 times 4. The 12 would be 6 and 2. The 6, we can do 3 and 2. And the 4, we can have 2 and 2. The radical or square root in this case would be sets of 2, 2 times 2, and 2 times 2. If we have two sets of 2, we can multiply those outside the square root. And taking the addition sign from above, 2 times 2 would be 4, and a single 3 left over. The radical 48 would be the same as 4 radical 3. And simplifying radical 27, 27 we can do 9 times 3. And 9 would be 3 times 3. Having a single pair of 3's and bringing the minus sign down from the question, we'll have minus 3 radical 3, which is the same as radical 27. After simplifying, looking at the radicals, they're all the same number, radical 3, which means we can combine all 3 together. 2 radical 3 plus 4 radical 3 would be 6 radical 3 and minus 3 more radical 3 would be 3 radical 3. 
And again, similar two variables, the radical 3 stays the same. And combining 2 plus 4 minus 3 would be 3 radical 3. Next question, inside parentheses, radical 11 minus radical 2, and outside parentheses raised to the second power. Again, we cannot add or subtract radicals with different numbers. Keep in mind the squared outside the parentheses does not distribute inside the parentheses when we have a binomial or plus or minus sign. Instead, the square represents will have the same parentheses written twice. So radical 11 minus radical 2 squared is radical 11 minus radical 2 times radical 11 minus radical 2. Having the same parentheses written twice or having two binomials, we can multiply these out using FOIL. Multiplying the first terms. A radical 11 times a radical 11. If you multiply the same radical twice, we'll have a pair of 11s. And again, taking the square root or simplifying that would be 11. Multiplying the outside terms. Radical 11 times a negative radical 2. Multiplying radicals, we can leave the radical on there. And the minus from the minus radical 2, 11 times 2 would be 22. So radical 11 times radical 2 would be radical 22 with the minus sign. The inside terms, negative radical 2 times radical 11, it's the same ones we just multiplied. So we'll have again minus radical 22. And multiplying the last terms, negative radical 2 times negative radical 2. Negative times negative would be positive. And you could multiply the inside numbers, 2 times 2, which would be 4, taking the radical or square root of 4, which would be 2. Or again, if you multiply two radicals with the same number, taking the square root cancels the radical. Combining like terms, 11 plus 2 would be 13. Minus radical 2 minus another radical 22 would be minus 2 radicals 22. So the final answer after we simplify would be 13 minus 2 radical 22. And last question for the section is 2 plus radical 2 all divided by 5 minus radical 2. Simplifying this, we cannot add integers to radicals. We cannot cancel out the radicals since we have binomials for the numerator and denominator. Similar to the previous question though, we want to multiply to cancel out the radical in the denominator. Since we have a binomial or two terms with a minus sign, what we can do is multiply by the conjugate, which is the opposite of the binomial. So instead of 5 minus radical 2, we can multiply by 5 plus radical 2. Multiplying again by the conjugate or opposite, when we multiply this out and FOIL it out, the square roots will cancel and we won't have a radical in the denominator. Similar, the numerator will multiply by the same 5 plus radical 2. Multiplying the numerator first, again we'll be FOILing 2 plus radical 2 times 5 plus radical 2. Multiplying the first terms, 2 times 5 will give us 10. And 2 times the last term, 2 times radical 2, would be 2 radical 2. Multiplying the inside terms would be 5 radical 2. And radical 2 times radical 2 would be radical or square root 4, or plus 2. And the bottom or denominator of the fraction. Again, foiling 5 minus radical 2 times 5 plus radical 2. First terms, 5 times 5 would be 25. Multiplying the outside terms would be 5 radical 2. Multiplying the inside terms will be the same but with a minus sign, minus 5 radical 2. And multiplying the last terms, negative times a positive would be negative. And the radicals again will cancel, 
and give us 2. Simplifying by combining like terms, the numerator integers 10 plus 2, we can add to get 12, and 2 radical 2 plus 5 radical 2 would be 7 radical 2. All divided by the inside terms, 5 radical 2 minus 5 radical 2 will cancel. And we'll have 25 minus 2, which would be 23. So our final answer would be 12 plus 7 radical 2 over 23.